Welcome to another video from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm taking the caveman illustration from Inkscape into Spine to create some animations. In the first part I added more detail and depth to the face, then created the body parts in part 2 to take the character design from this one, which is from a very early tutorial, to the new look which has a lot more detail to it. In this video we're going to take it apart. It's already exploded into bits but we're going to take more elements that will be animated later on like the mouse, the iris, the shader for the eyes or the eyebrows and nose and create separate PNG files from these. Inkscape gives you a number of options when exporting to PNG. I want to export the selection only, so I click on selection, give it a file name and say export and go through that with every image. I tried batch exporters and to be quite honest, I could not get them to work properly. There were too many issues. In the end, it was faster to just do it manually. I like to name my files in a way that makes sense when I look not just at the images but at the files makes it easier to replace them later on if I need changes or if I create a new character with the same setup but new artwork. Let's switch to Spine. It's one of the skeletal animation software that is out on the market. Spriter, Dragonbones are other examples. Some game engines use the same kind of principle in built-in animation tools. Images are connected to bones and then these bones are rotated scaled, skewed to create the animation. I created a new project that sits in the same directory as the images. That way the images will be imported right away and we can start bringing them into the scene. On the setup screen you define the key pose and the hierarchy of elements that is referenced in all the animations you create later on. Some tools like Photoshop offer export filters that keep the placement of your elements intact. I'm not aware of one that exists and works for Inkscape. So this is the manual process of doing it. It looks a little messy. I did speed up the timing a little bit here. It's basically bringing the objects into their place and sorting out the hierarchy, what elements go in front of the others. This is done in the draw order. There you can just move things up and down. Sometimes it takes a little bit of tweaking, but you can always go back into the key pose later on. You can also change the positioning and the hierarchy in each animation. Once all the elements are in place, I create the bones. I try to start them at joints that make sense and give them enough length so they can easily grab them when I animate them. The main thing to take into account is the hierarchy. Bones are attached to other bones. So if I want to move the head, the bones for the eyebrows, the iris, etc. should be connected to that one and not to the spine. The spine will move all bones but from there on it branches out. Once all the bones are in place, I assign the images to the bones. There is a shortcut key to do it directly when you draw the bone. For some strange reason I just can't seem to get it to work properly when I video it so it looks really messy because I have to click four or five times. So I'll just do it manually and move elements in the hierarchy panel and put them into their place. That also gives me a chance to name some of the important bones so when I'm animating them later on I know what part I'm actually clicking on. If they're close to guess it, especially in the face, it helps to have a name to them. It takes a little longer in the beginning, but once you have it set up properly, this rig can be used for cavemen number two, three, four, and 10 if I want to. All I'd have to do is change the artwork. It also helps me revisit a rig a while later and know exactly what's in place because I might know now, I might know in a week, I might not know in two or three months. Once all the images are connected to bones, I give it a quick try, move the head and all the other parts should follow, move the spine and the whole character should be rotating. Now we have a character that is ready to be animated. Rather than go with the complex animation first up, I try something a lot simpler. 
to see if there's any flaws in the setup, if the skeleton is working properly, to allow me to easily animate the more complex cycles like a walk or an attack. Let's switch to animation modes. It's either clicking on the top or pressing Ctrl and Tab that toggles between the two screens. Here we have a timeline and the main controls for rotate, translate, scale and shear which are the four options we have for transforming our bones. For the idle animation we want a little bit of a rising of the body, a movement of the arms. So let's start by selecting the spine and adding some keys on the timeline. Gonna define it as a 40 frame animation. The beginning and the end frame, so frame 0 and frame 40 should be identical all the time. While other programs don't need the last frame in order to create a loop, spine does, so just copy the first to the last frame to keep it smooth. I started by scaling the body bone and moved the arms just a little bit by rotating them. Was that the hair would move as well, so let's rotate the ponytail and have that go up and down and while we edit the sideburn will move a little bit as well just to make it look more lively. Seeing we have a separate bone for the nose and the eyebrows, let's give them a little bit of animation as well to have the whole character look more lively when moving. Animation is a process that requires patience. You make small changes and test them and make more adjustments and test again. In the end, I have an idle animation that looks all right. He is moving just enough to be visible and yet not over the top like he is about to die short of breath. Just like detail in art, make sure the detail you put in the animation will actually show in the game. If it's scaled down too small, you might not see anything and you might have to exaggerate your animations a little bit more to be visible. So far, the setup seems to be working all right. It's time to make the caveman walk. Rather than do a frame by frame animation, all I need to do is create the keyframes and the program will calculate the in-betweens. Might still have to tweak those to make it smooth and have fluid curves. I start by having the arms swing back and forth, seeing that's the way easier animation than the motion that I need for the legs. Basically we have three key frames for that one, the beginning and the end being the same, the arm being all the way to the front, and the extreme pose on the other end is the arm being all the way at the back, and it will swing through automatically thanks to the program. Once the back arm is done, I'll repeat the same process with the arm in the front. Here I'm going to move it forward just a little bit so it looks like the shoulder is actually moving forward while he's walking. This should make the walk look a little bit more dynamic. I rotated the body a little bit to give him that forward motion. And then a lot of trying to get the right bit of adjustment that works for the animation. A little bit rotation here, a little bit rotation there. And move the head forward, move the head back, see what works better. Make the eyes look down a little bit to where he's walking. And finally, it's up to the legs. Again, working the extreme poses first, the extreme front and the extreme back. After adjusting the front leg, I'm doing the same thing with the back leg, just the opposite way. As the front leg moves forward, the back leg moves behind. It takes a bit of fiddling around moving and rotating the limbs. Testing it shows that there is a flaw in the loop. Something flicks at the end frame, so one of the beginning frames of the body needs to be copied towards the end. And we should have a smoother start for this animation. It still does not look like a walk, but the legs are moving. The next step is making the feet actually hit the ground and not just float straight through. This stage we have not rotated any of the lower limbs, so the feet are just hanging on to the upper thigh and move along with that. So let's go in and adjust those rotations to make the foot hit the ground go straight as it moves backwards and then lift up at the back before the knee is moving forward to step out again. It takes a little bit of time to get that motion right and I could do a lot more 
if you, for example, break up the foot into two parts, have the sole and the toes as separate objects, you can make the rolling of the foot as it sets onto the ground and as it lifts up a lot more smooth. Yet again, it's a matter of how much time you're willing to invest in your animation and how much of it will be visible in the game. Because making all these fancy moves and then rendering a 32 by 32 pixel in-game display will hardly be visible. As you can see, it takes a lot of tweaking and testing and more tweaking and more testing to get the animation right. But in the end, it is a fun task to do. I really enjoy doing the animations even though they are time consuming. And even though this one is not perfect yet, it still looks a little too floaty and probably is too slow. I will call it quits as I've reached the 10 minute mark for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something new today, hit the like button to celebrate your new bit of knowledge. To help you remember everything you've learned even better, subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you'd like to see on this channel or on my website in the comments below. And I hope to see you again soon.